Hello beautiful internet family, Danny from dancetube.tv and in today's video I've got 17 must know tips and settings for your mini SE. Now if you're new around these parts you can expect brutally honest tech reviews on the channel and I made it my mission to empower tech enthusiasts to unlock their creative potential with technology. The 17 tips and settings will be broken down into different categories and as I'm explaining them I'll show you where you can find these different areas within the application. So I'm going to be showing you the flight menu, I'll also be showing you the safety menu, the control menu, the camera menu, the transmission menu as well as the about menu and I'll also have some timestamps in the video description so that you can find exactly where I'm mentioning every setting and tip throughout this entire video. I'm also just about to release a brand new drone course into the world. It's something I'm extremely proud of. It's packed with resources, high quality videos, and guidance from a drone expert. I'm extremely proud of how it's all come out, and I can't wait for you guys to check it out. So if you do want to get notified on when that is available, the top link in the video description will actually allow you to sign up to the newsletter, and then from there you'll know once the course is available. Something I would highly recommend for pilots starting out, especially if the Mini SE is your first drone for example, it can be really overwhelming those initial flights. So this course is designed to help you become a fearless drone pilot. All right, so when we start out with the flight menu, what I mean by that is the main interface that you see right now in your screen, which is just the camera feed. This is known as the flight menu. And the first setting I'm gonna show you is how you can change the different modes that are available within the Mini SE. In the top left corner, it will tell you what mode you're currently in. So you've got P mode, you've got S mode, and then you've got C mode. And as you tap on it, it will give you a very basic description of what that means. But if you really want to navigate this a little bit clearer, then you can go into the settings, which is the dots in the top right corner, go across to control, and then as you tap on the different modes, it will give you a more detailed description of what you're getting into, basically. It will tell you exactly what that setting is and what you can expect from your drone. The second tip relating to the flight menu is called the pre-flight check. Now you can access this in the top left corner and it's called altitude zone, but sometimes it will pop up and tell you that you've got an error. It might say, you know, calibrate compass, or it might say calibrate IMU. It might tell you about the wind conditions. It might tell you about hardware that might be malfunctioning. You can literally tap on that altitude zone or whatever that error message is that's popping up in the top left and it will pull down the pre-flight check. Now this is really good to tap on before every flight because it will actually give you a breakdown of what you need to know about your drone. And then from there as well, you can also access the auto return to home altitude, the max altitude and the max distance, which is something I'll be talking about a little later on in the safety menu. But firstly, I would recommend with the auto return to home, make sure that that's at least 80 meters to 100 meters. By default, it's at like 30 meters, but there are a lot of buildings and trees that are higher than 30 meters. So just make sure you bump that up to 80 to about 100 meters, depending on the situation you're in. I normally just go with 100 meters to be safe, and that means that your drone will go up to 100 meters before it returns to home. Tip number three is relating to the map. Now in the bottom left corner, you can see there's a tiny little icon that is the map icon. Now by default, it doesn't show you the map, it just has an icon. But once you tap on it, it will actually pull up a smaller map overlay. Now this is really nice to have. I normally have that one up by default just so I can see the overlay. But if you tap on it again, it will take you to the full map overlay. And then in the bottom left corner, you'll just have the camera feed with the map being the main focus. And as you can see, I'm unchecking and checking certain things just to show you what's removed and then what's added to the map. By default, I leave all of these on just to give me as much information as possible. But you can turn certain ones off if it's cluttering the interface. The map interface is great to just jump into and get a sense of where you are and what you need to know about. But I like this smaller overlay that I've got right here where it's in the bottom left corner and then you've got the camera feed as the main focus. Just having that little overlay is really nice. By default, like I said, it's just that icon, but you can actually change the way it looks as well. And you can have a very unique design one, which we can see right here, which kind of gives us like a compass to show us which way the drone's facing. Uh, that one's quite handy as well, but I really like the map interface in the bottom left corner. 
Moving on to tip number four, and this is the find my drone interface. Now once you tap on that, it will actually bring you to the map interface and it will tell you exactly where the drone was last located. Now you can then actually tap on it and start it beeping and flashing. So let's say it has crashed into a bush and you're trying to find it and you're in the location it's telling you, but you just can't seem to find it. You can tap on start beeping and flashing and then it'll actually give you an idea of roughly where the drone is. It will give you a better cue to where to actually look in that bush. And I find this to be just something really helpful to familiarize yourself with. Hopefully you don't have to use that feature, but if you ever have to use it, just know that it's there and it's really easy to access. And it is extremely accurate as well. It does a great job of locating where your drone is. Moving on to tip number five, and this is the auto slash pro mode. So in the bottom right corner, you've got the auto option. You can then tap on that and it will take you to the pro option, which is where you have full control over really everything. You can break down the ISO, you can break down the white balance, you can have a look at the shutter, you can then have a look at the resolution and frame rate. And in the auto mode, a lot of that is automated and you only have basic controls like the resolution and frames per second. So if you really wanna dive into getting the most out of your drone, you wanna play around with the pro mode and really familiarize yourself with what settings work well. Also those zebra patterns that you can see in the background, that's called the overexposure warning, which I'll show you a little later on. That's actually tip number 14, but that actually gives you a good idea of how well the actual scene is exposed. So at the moment, there's a fair bit of white in that background, and that's why there's quite aggressive zebra patterns in the background. But straight when we go to auto, you'll see that it's balanced perfectly, and now we don't have those patterns at all. So that's something that I would recommend enabling the overexposure warning, which I'll show you in tip number 14. Moving on to tip number six, which is the final tip for the flight menu. And this is the battery interface that's in the top right corner. So when your drone is just sitting on the ground, you've turned it on, you can tap on that battery icon and it will tell you nothing. It will say zero for everything. But as you start flying your drone a little bit, you'll notice that it will then bring up some relevant information. So it will tell us how long until it returns to home. It will tell us how long until a forced landing. And it'll also tell us how long until the battery is completely depleted. Now this is a really good gauge to just tap on. You know, like when you're at 30%, for example, it's nice to tap on that and give you an idea of how many minutes you've got left. So it really gives you some clear ideas and some clarity around when to return to home. And I do find myself tapping this icon regularly just to see how long the app is telling me I've got left. Obviously this isn't 100% accurate as it depends on so many different factors, but it's just nice to know that, okay, well I've got 17 minutes until a forced landing. I do not wanna be at that point. And I've got 12 minutes until return to home. So I know that, okay, it's gonna start initiating return to home in 12 minutes. So I'm gonna start flying back in about five minutes and make sure that I'm relatively close to me before any of that happens to make sure that I can safely land without having to force it into a return to home sequence. Moving on to tip number seven. Now this is in the safety menu and how you access the safety menu is you tap those three dots in the top right corner and then it will take you through to this menu interface here. The first one is the safety menu and this is where I want you to play around with the auto return to home, the max altitude and the max height. Now this is what I was talking about a little bit before with the pre-flight check, but it's really important to make sure that your auto return to home altitude is over 80 meters. So anywhere from 80 meters to 100 meters I find to be the sweet spot. And then also if this is your initial flight, it's really handy to play around with that max altitude and max distance, especially if you go to an open field, you can then then limit how far the drone can actually fly away from you. So that just gives you a little bit of a safety blanket. So let's say for example it is your first flight, you're terrified, you can literally set max altitude to 20 meters and max distance to 20 meters. That means it will create like an imaginary bubble as such where the drone can't fly that far away from you and that's a really nice starting point just to get your head around how to fly the drone in a controlled setting in a nice open field. But then once you've got used to that, you can then obviously adjust the max altitude and play around with the max distance. Just keep in mind that max altitude, you can't go over 120 meters legally. So you wanna keep it under 120 meters. It actually pops up with a warning if you try to go over that, just to let you know that it's basically breaking a law. So just keep that in mind. It's gotta be under 120 meters for the max altitude. Tip number eight is relating to calibrating your sensors. Now this is something that's really easy to do. It's literally within the safety menu, there's an option to calibrate the IMU and to also calibrate your compass as well. Now with previous DJI drones, you had to calibrate your compass pretty much every single flight. But now with the newer drones, it isn't as commonplace. It doesn't even tell you that you need to do it regularly. So it's one of those things that, you know, you can still do here and there, but 
it doesn't have to be done every flight. You know, it'll actually tell you through the pre-flight check whether you need to calibrate your compass. And same with the IMU. You know, you don't have to do that, but it's handy to do here and there. But it's also just really good to familiarize yourself with how to access that setting. Um, really easy to do, and I would recommend even just trying it before you need to do it. So, you know, right now you might as well load up if your drone's already ready to go, it's on your desk, you're watching this video, you might as well just get used to calibrating both of these so that you know what the process looks like while you're in a safe environment, um, just so then you know exactly what to do when you're on the field and you're a little bit stressed that you don't know what to do. At least you practice it at home and you know exactly what to expect out of the process. The final tip for the safety setting is tip number nine, and this is to do with the battery information or battery info, and this is how you can actually check the battery health. So I showed you that other battery interface on the flight menu, but this one here actually gives you a lot more detail. It will tell you the battery voltage, it will tell you the battery temperature, it will also show you if any of the battery cells are damaged or if you've got anything that you need to be aware of. It will tell you how many times you've charged your battery as well, and it's just a really easy, clear interface to navigate. And I would recommend just jumping into this and again familiarizing yourself with what a normal battery temperature should be, uh, what the battery voltage should look like, and the fact that it's green is telling you everything's good, but you might have moments where it's you know either an orangey yellow color or it might be red, which could then symbolize that there's maybe some damaged cells within the battery. So again, just something to jump into and just kind of get your head around a little bit of what to expect out of your battery. Moving on to the control menu now and tip number 10, which is the FPV mode. Now this is a setting that you can enable through the control settings and it's underneath gimbal. It will tell you different gimbal modes that are available to you. So the follow mode is the default mode and it actually remains fixed horizontally. So that means that the gimbal will remain fixed and it will create those dynamic drone shots that you would expect out of any drone. It's just smooth movements, it looks fantastic, and it's got more of a cinematic feel behind it. And then if you tap on the FPV mode, then it will tell you that the gimbal will follow the movement of the aircraft. So you'll see some footage now as I'm banking around this tiny little park, and you'll see that the actual camera is moving with the aircraft. So the gimbal isn't stabilizing the footage and keeping everything nice and stable and looking pretty. It's actually moving with the drone itself, which does give a unique perspective. And that's the whole FPV perspective. So if you want something a little bit more fun and different, then you can literally just tap on FPV mode and create some unique looking videos from your drone. Moving on to tip number 11, which is still in the control settings here, it's called advanced gimbal settings. Now this is really useful as it actually lets you set up different parameters for the gimbal. So you can change the pitch speed as well as the pitch smoothness. And you can see from the video here what that actually means. So with the pitch speed, that means that it will move a lot faster and the smoothness means that it will settle out a little bit slower meaning that it won't be this erratic movement where it pitches down and then it just stops moving. The smoothness will actually allow it to smooth out that footage and create a more natural looking shot. So it's really nice to play around with these settings. They're both phenomenal to play around with, but I do find that it's super useful to get used to the kind of footage that you want out of your drone. So maybe you do want something a little smoother. Maybe you do want those sharp movements. This is where you're gonna go in the settings to adjust the gimbal settings. So you can see as I'm adjusting the pitch speed, you can see the different reaction that you're getting out of the camera. And then with pitch smoothness, you can see that once I let go, it smoothly settles out the camera. So this again is personal preference, play around with it and see which one works for you. But pitch speed and pitch smoothness are really great to play around with and it actually gives you a bit of control over how the camera will operate. And then the other setting that I always recommend to people is allowing that upward gimbal rotation. That means that you get an additional 20 degrees of upward movement meaning that you can look up to the sky a little bit more, or if you're flying like low to the ground, then you can look up 20 degrees and get a bit more of a unique perspective. I always recommend this one. There's no issues using it. You don't get any of the propellers in the shot. It doesn't become an issue using it over a long period of time. Like it's a fine setting to enable, just for some reason by default it's turned off. But this is something, again, I'd recommend you get additional 20 degrees of viewing angle. And then moving on to the 12th tip, which is the final tip for the control menu. And this is the flight tutorial. So this is a really helpful like pre-flight checklist almost. It's just a flight tutorial. It tells you exactly what you need to know about the interface. It tells you what you need to do before even flying the drone. And it breaks down some of the things that I've been explaining here. So it's really useful to just tap on that, even just for your first couple of flights, just to get used to the interface and where all the buttons are. And then from there, you probably won't have to do it again. But it's just good to start out and 
yeah, go through the process of learning the flight tutorial. Moving on to tip number 13, which is in the camera settings here. This is the histogram, and it's something I always recommend using. It gives you a visual gauge of how the image is being perceived. So as you see, I'm bumping down the EV, so it's going to minus one, and you can see that it's getting a lot darker. So there's a lot more blacks in the scene, and then straight when I go to the plus, plus 2.3, plus 1.3, you can see it's a lot more overexposed, and we're getting those zebra patterns, that peaking in the background there, and that's shows us that it's way too overexposed. So ideally you want to keep it in that midpoint and you don't want it to be peaking either side. You don't want it to be peaking on the left or the right. You want a nice bell-shaped curve almost in the middle. Moving on to tip number 14, and this is the overexposure warning. So you can see when I don't have it on, I have no idea whether it's overexposed. It's just based on my eyesight, whether I think it's overexposed. But straight when I have that overexposure warning on, it actually tells me with those zebra patterns whether things are overexposed and whether I need to account for that. So I love having the histogram and the overexposure warning on together. And then tip number 15, the final tip for the camera settings is the grid lines. Now, not everyone likes these and they can be a little bit intrusive, but I really like having the grid lines and that center point as well. So you can enable all three if you want, but it's a little bit full on. So I like to enable just that center point and then the rule of thirds, which is basically that grid line that you can see now. That just tells me whether the horizon is straight, it lets me know how to frame a shot, and it also gives me an opportunity to know exactly where the midpoint is. Moving on to tip number 16, which is within the transmission settings. Now, this is something I wouldn't recommend as much as I would with other drones. So seeing as the Mini SE uses an enhanced Wi-Fi, I would recommend for the most part just going with the auto channel mode. But if you are noticing that it's just not doing a great job and you're still getting a lot of interference, it's just good to come into this menu interface here and it will tell you how like cluttered I guess the frequency is in your area so it will tell you how much interference is going on so your drone has to actually be landed at this point you can't be flying to see this information but you know once your drone's landed or before you take off just come into this menu here and it will tell you how cluttered the airways are with interference and if you do find that the auto settings don't work that well you can always tap on manual and then you can manually choose the channel that you want to set to um, like I said with the enhanced Wi-Fi it's not as reliable as OcuSync so auto is probably your best bet here but like I said it might not work technology doesn't always work the way you want it to so you do have the option to go in here tap on manual and then tap on one of the channels that has the least interference and then boom you're set up in you know channel 161 instead of 149 which could have been the default and maybe the auto setting just wasn't figuring that out so you do have that control and that's nice to go into that menu and see what's happening in the area Tip number 17, which is the final tip of this video, is located in the About section. Tapping on that will actually bring up a few options here. So the two ones I want you to look at here is Aircraft Firmware. You can tap on that check for updates and also the FlySafe database. You can check for updates there. This is just the best way to manually do it yourself. Sometimes you might miss that there's an update. You might just jump straight into Go Fly and you'll miss that there's a whole update. So it's worth going into the settings here and seeing whether there's relevant updates that you might need to you know, force onto your drone as such because you've missed the last three updates because you just have flown straight away without even noticing there was an update. So it's nice every couple of flights just to go in the about section and see if there's any new updates for your drone. But besides that, they are my 17 must know tips and settings for the Mini SE. There are a ton of other options through the menu system. So just browse through it, see what you find in there. These are the 17 most important ones that I believe that you really need to get your head around. But you know, besides that, there are a ton of other options there, and the whole idea is just to familiarize yourself with the interface and the application and how to find everything. That's the whole idea of these tips and settings videos, just to make it easier for you guys to navigate the menu. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to have a fantastic day, and I'll chat to you in the next one. Peace.